absolutely beautiful. Perfect. Yes. Yes, I have to admit it. It has got something. Just look at the view out of this window. Those moors. Yes. Yes, it's lovely. There's a stream down there, see. Well, that must be Cradlebeck itself. The village is probably named after it. Ah. Looks like the garden area goes right down to the water's edge. Oh, God, Ian, I want it. I want oh, it. Sheesh. A whole garden. Just imagine a whole garden all to ourselves after that grotty little window box in I do. Oh, shush, let me think. The roof looks sound, from what I could see. Yes, and those windows, real mullion windows, and that stone staircase. Ian, it's fantastic. It's, uh, it's funny about the Victorian fireplace. I wonder... I bet if we were to knock through, we'd find the original stone hearth and everything. A house this old, it must have had one. We could burn logs and things, couldn't we? Yes, get a proper dog grate made. <laughs> What's that funny smell? Uh, dry rot, I expect. And the place must be riddled with it. Now, that's what I mean. It's really huge, isn't it? A really big house, especially for the 16th century. Yeah, so much for that dream cottage of yours. Must have been the actual manor house, I should think. Well, I suppose we're one of the oldest houses in the village. Cradle's End House. Just imagine us living here. Now, wait until I've done my sums first. I could have my loom against that window looking down to the bed. <sighs> my kitchen would be huge. Plenty of room for dye baths and so on. Huh? Marvellous work. It would cost a fortune to make it habitable. And on the borders of Yorkshire, all those woollen mills. Quite a market for my designs. Hey, what are you going to call yourself? Bronte textile designs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, everybody's Bronte something around here. And all those farmers in dire need of a good accountant like you. Yeah. Yes, it would be a good investment, I suppose. Oh, admit it. Go on. You love it too, don't you? Yes. Yes, I do. All right, I love it as well. Oh. <laughs> shh, 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 shh. What are we whispering for? There's nobody listening. Well, I feel as though they are spying on us. So they can get to the estate agent in the morning before us and gazump us. <laughs> snatch it from our hot little grass. Don't be silly. So I'm glad we got a look at it today, before the estate agent took us round. It's a good idea of yours to come up on spec. <laughs> Hey, who's that in there? Oh, Ian. I saw you. Saw you climbing in. Vandals, that's what you are. What are you doing in there? Ah, uh, mm -hmm. uh, hello there. I saw you climbing in back way from up there. Uh, a shepherd or something, are you? Yes, I am. And you're a trespasser. Ah, uh, well, yes. Um, strictly speaking, I, I suppose we are really. But, well, you see, we're interested in buying the place. Must be balmy. Why? Anyway, you want to see the estate agent. That's what you want. Yes, well, we, we plan to tomorrow. We just wanted a preview, that's all. Oh, it's, uh, it's nice to know that somebody cares. Reassuring. Is it? We could be neighbours before long, Mr... Uh, neighbours? Uh, Where do you come from? London, is it? Well, yes, we do, actually. 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 Old place will be full of off condoms before long. Bet you when it was deserted, if you ask me. Old village. Oh, are there people here already? Woman down the road fancies she's an artist. Artist. Stupid bitch. Sits on her fanny painting daft bridges all day long. How nice. Is it? Off condoms. Anyway, you'd better shift out of there. You're trespassing. That's what you are. Well, we're just off, actually. Cheerio, then, and thanks. Off condoms. <laughs> <laughs> what on earth was that? Local, a local shepherd, he says. Highly disreputable. We shan't have him to dinner when we move in. <laughs> oh, uh, if we move in. Oh, Ian, we must have it. Oh, but the price they're asking, love. It's cheap for what it is. We still can't afford it. Oh, look. Oh, listen. We could try to get the price down a bit. I suppose we could talk to the estate agent. Yes. When he shows us round tomorrow, for the first time, really. We'll uh, run the place down, pick out its faults. You crafty beggar. <laughs> oh, God, I do hope he does knock a bit off. Yes, yeah, so do I. With a little imagination. And a lot of money. This could be a dream house. Just look at those arched doorways. Just look at those arched doorways. They're most attractive. Yeah. Yes, with imagination and a uh, <laughs> little money, of course. Uh, this could be quite a dream house. Yes, but... Uh... Oh, well, you know, it's a cost a fortune to get it even habitable. I mean, it, it's just a shell, really. Oh, the roof's in excellent condition. Well, there's nothing else. Sanitation, electricity. These new windows, mate. Yes, just look at those mullion windows. Uh, there's a conservation order on this village, you know. 
You're quite likely to get a good grunt to do it up. Oh, it costs a fortune. And you never know what gems you might find once you get going, too. Now, that fireplace, for instance, almost certainly got built up in the 19th century. Uh, you'd find a stone fireplace behind that, I'm quite sure. Hmm. Funny smell. Yes, we smelt it yesterday. Uh, yeah, um, dry rot, that, almost certainly. Hmm. Doesn't smell like dry rot. Still, you may be right. Now, oh, that's what I mean. All the wood in the place needs renewing, and the price of timber these days... Oh, no. No, it's, it's out of the question. The damp cost alone... But Ian... No, no, I'm sorry, love. It's far too much. The initial cost of buying is just too much in proportion to what needs spending on it. Well, uh, I suppose I could speak to the owners. And then there's the cost of fitting new windows. They'd have to be accurate of, of the period. I could try. See if I can get into lower his price. Yeah. I mean, oh, that's if you're really keen on the place. But we are. But only at a reasonable price. Oh, uh, of course, yes. Um, after all, we'd have to find proper oak beams and everything to support the upper floor. Oh, gosh, you're right. Yes, that'd be pricey. Well, I'll see what I can do. Uh, I'll phone him this morning. I call back to the office this afternoon, if you like. Well, is it worth hanging around, darling, do you think? Oh, well, I don't know. We've both got to get back to town for our work, you know. Oh, you both work? Yes, I'm a designer. Commercial. Oh. <laughs> see. Well, textiles, paper goods, carry bags, that kind of thing. Ian's an accountant. Oh, really? That's very interesting. Right. Yes, the chap we have doesn't seem much cop. He's all right, I suppose. But a bit of a mix-up over some VAT, though. Uh, I don't know. It's a bit of a headache. Yes, it can be a problem if it's not handled properly. Uh, certainly could do with some new blood in that direction. London base now, are you? Yes, yes, of course. I'll be looking for new clients if we're to move up here. Hmm. Though it's, uh, it's a bit unlikely at the moment. Yeah, well, uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> see what we can do. Yes, yes, quite. Uh, anyway, I'll... Uh, anyway. Yes, well... I'll, I'll be off, then. Are you coming? Or, or uh, perhaps you'd like to look around a bit on your own. It, it's a lovely area. Mm. Yeah, all people like yourselves moving into it. You know, doing it up. Really? Yes. Uh, Cradlebeck was a deserted village a year or so ago. How sad. Yes. Uh, well, uh... <laughs> Yes, well, I, I think we'll just have a have a pot around, see what there is to see. Hey, Alex? Yes, why not? Oh, well, uh, see you later on today, then, eh? Yes, well, we'll pop in, if we can. Uh, cheerio, then. Bye. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Cheerio. Oh, Shh, my dear. <laughs> oh, I hope he gets the price down for us. He might. He just might. Oh, do you think so? But he was playing the same game as we were. Oh, I hope so. So do I. You do like it. Oh, it's marvellous. What an atmosphere. Yes, it has. It grabs me. Oh, does it? <laughs> <laughs> I'll design thousands of carrier bags to help pay for it, I promise. You better. I'll go puce designing them. Oh, don't do that. Hmm. <laughs> Isn't it peaceful? Yes. After London. Oh, yeah. Oh, it would be nice. Just think. A year from now. Coffee ready. What? Is the coffee ready? Oh, yes. So shut the door. Oh, thank God for that. What a din. They said they'd be ready oh. upstairs this week. Builders are never done when they say they will be. Up. Well, they should be. Here. Ah. Ah. Honestly, you can't trust them an inch. I found them under drawing the ceiling in the bedroom last week, covering up my lovely beams. <laughs> you know, I'll bet they'll want me to plaster the stone walls. They think we're mad leaving as it is. Well, I'm glad we decided to move in at last. Keep an eye on them. I'm terrified for my loom if they damage that. Are you going to help me with this fireplace? I'm nearly through. Oh, did the Victorian tiles come off whole? I want them for the kitchen. Oh, no, it wasn't possible. It was cemented in. No. Oh, God, it stopped. Oh, thank goodness for small mercies. It's all right for you in your nice office. I've got a permanent headache. Smith and Aitchison are a permanent headache. I'm sure they're not that bad. I thought you were getting on with them. Oh, they're all right, I suppose. At least they haven't called me a, an off Cumden yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, though, you know. I don't feel that they trust me somehow. There seems to be some important work going on, and I'm not in on it. I thought you all had your own time. Well, yes, normally, but uh, they all three keep passing around this particular file. And they won't show me. File 707, it's called. You're joking. No, I'm not. 
I'll have to get to the bottom of that. I feel left out. Not properly taken into the firm's trust. Oh, I expect you'll see this secret file soon enough. Yes. Um, well, I suppose the men will be wanting their tea. I'd better get the kettle uh, on. No, no, don't bother. Uh, I brought them some beer. Whatever for? <laughs> They'll never finish upstairs in this race. Special day. Celebration, love. Have you forgotten? What? Your birthday's not till December. Anniversary. Oh, it's not. Your bonkers. <laughs> the day we bought Cradle's End House. Oh, is it? Yes. Oh, what a pity. What do you mean? I invited them round for a fortnight's time. Oh, the builders? Our neighbours, dear, for oh. dinner, for a housewarming. I thought we might have the fireplace done by then, and we could light a log fire and have dinner on that big table we saw in the antique shop. Oh, well, Alex. <laughs> oh, come on, then. Let's get to work on that fireplace. The first anniversary is just the day to do it. Right. Ready? Stand back. <laughs> Whenever did you get that pickaxe? The men. <laughs> oh. Oh. This should make me fit. The men will think we're demolishing all their good work. You're right, Jim. Oh, uh, uh, yes, thank you. Just knocking out the fireplace. Oh, I see. There you are, is he? All right, let's make it a bit bigger, shall we? Oh, Ian, that smell. <sighs> oh, God. Oh, God, that's horrible. What on earth's that? It's coming from the hole. Yes, I think it is. Oh. I don't know, is it? I haven't smelled it before, have you? No. Well, not since we moved in, anyway. That's a fortnight. What is it? Ian, do you remember when we first came and looked at the house, we smelt something funny then? Did we? Yes, we did, yes. When the estate agent showed us round, he smelt it too. Well, this was bricked up, though. Well, it wasn't as strong. Oh. oh, you said it was dry rot. Oh, yes. Well, there shouldn't be any left now, though. It. It's all new wood. Well, there wouldn't be wood up a chimney anyway, would there? No. Uh, I'm going to take a good look in there. Stand back while I take another swipe. Right. I think that's about big enough. <coughs> no. There's no smell up there. It's, uh... No. It's down here. In this corner. Oh, how funny. What do you think it is? Sort of a decaying smell. Yes, it's funny that. It's just in this corner here. Oh, it's going now. Yes. Yes, it's gone. <sighs> oh, it was disgusting. Do you think there's a dead bird or something in here? Well, I can, but look. I'll have to get to the bottom of it, that's for sure. Mm. And there's only one way to find out. Coming from an artist. Oh, you're an artist yourself, dear, surely, designing as you do. Yes, I suppose I am, really. Oh, you'll have to look at the textile sample she's working on. Really lovely stuff. <laughs> I get quite inspired by the colours on the moors. They change every day, don't they? Oh, what a wonderful smell. Are we to expect an artist in the kitchen as well? <laughs> yes, yeah, she's super. Well, it's all a bit special, housewarming and all. I really wanted to do a roast-sucking pig on a spit over the fire. Oh, and who would turn the spit as if I didn't know? <laughs> Where'd you get the wood for the fire? Foraging. We went out on Sunday. It makes a lovely warming blaze, doesn't it? Yes, my hearth's not nearly so big. You've got a lovely little nook there in that corner. I bet that's where they had the baby's cradle originally. What? In that corner, really? Yes, that's where they put it. Not dangerously close to the fire, but warm and free from draughts. Oh, how lovely. We ought to look out for one. What? A cradle. An old antique cradle. Yes, wooden, I should think. Why? We're not going to need one, I'm here to tell you. <laughs> no maternal instinct, eh? <laughs> None at all. I'm a career lady, I am. Oh, no, to just finish it off. Yes, you can just see it, can't you? That's cradle snug in that corner. Yes. It would look rather nicely ethnic. After all, the house is called Cradle's End. It ought to have a cradle. Oh, what a lovely idea. <laughs> ah, more guests. I'll go. Ah. Coming. Hey. Oh, oh, oh. 
Oh, look. Uh, Is that your cat? Maisie, yes. Uh, she um, she doesn't like visitors. No? No, a most unsociable cat. Oh, she is. Yeah. She'll retire to the kitchen if I'm any judge. You haven't uh, met Mary and Joe. Yeah, glad you could come. Oh, we wouldn't miss a good day. No, <laughs> no, she's quite right. Mary and Joe own a boutique in Ascombe A boutique? Oh, well, we have come to a trendy village. Boutique owners, eh? Oh, all right, just like Chelsea. Here, aren't we, Lizzie, old girl? <laughs> Mary, let me take your coat. Oh, as I suppose we are. Uh, boutiques, artist studios. Oh, what a gorgeous frock, Mary. Mm. I rather thought so. Flash into it. Must have cost a fortune. Hey, just look at that label. Oh, I am jealous. I thought our customers wouldn't appreciate it, so I took it for myself. <laughs> I appreciate it. Hey, that's her story. Well, I deserve it, don't She's I? She's right, she does. Anyway, it looks gorgeous, doesn't it, Ian? Mm. Quite a trendsetter is our Mary. Very striking. In mm. fact, a knockout. Hey, isn't your husband nice? <laughs> Oh, I'll go. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Coming. I hear you're a right good accountant. Is that uh, right? Well, uh, uh, so so. Well, we could do with one of those. You know what about shops and trade? There you are, Ian. More custom for you. Uh, it's Dr. Oh. Suckley. Oh, yes. Pleased to meet you. How do you do, Mr. Turner? Oh, we didn't know you were coming. Well, I hope that's all right. Oh, we like a big party, <laughs> don't we, Mary? Yes, we do. Ian, take the coat out to the hall, oh, would you? Yes, yes. Uh, Dr. Suckley. Oh, thanks. Oh, Lizzie, dear. I didn't see you over there. How are you? All right. Good. Except for the rheumatism. You shouldn't sit out painting landscapes in all weathers. I've seen you when I've taken my dog out. You have to capture the mood. She should get one of them shooting sticks. <laughs> She's right. It's them cold stones. It strikes right through to your energy. It's a matter of fact, I do own a camping stool. Good, good. Well, here we all are, then. <laughs> Quite a jolly yes. little gathering, aren't we? <laughs> Off come dance, everyone. <laughs> you, uh, you don't sound it, if you'll uh, forgive me saying so. Um, uh, Sherry, all right, everybody. Oh, right, grand. Lovely. Well, uh, we're from Blackburn, really. Are you? Mary, Sherry. Uh, and I'm sure you need topping up, Lizzie. Oh, thanks. Mm, dry sherry, eh? Makes a change from cocktails. <coughs> She's got a right passion on for making cocktails with our Mary. <laughs> yeah, ever since we went into this place in Blackpool, right, posh it was. <laughs> Lovely cocktails they did. Mm, went right to your head. Well, sherry will seem a bit tame then. Mm, I love a Montelado. Well, cheers. Oh, yes. Cheers. To the new owners of Cradle's End House. Oh, I love right. right. Cradle's End House. Cheers. Oh, cheers. oh, what a lovely welcome. Yes, thank you. Do you remember the first neighbour we met? Oh. Who was that? Oh, some old tramp. At least that's what he looked like. He said he was a shepherd, actually. Oh, uh, rather rough and lecherous, was he? Oh, you want to stay clear of him. That's uh, old Gus, who you're not safe with him about. Ethel Olorenshaw up at the Cradle Heights farm got a nasty mm. shot from him in her barn one day. Oh. Yes. <laughs> He's quite a local character. Well, at least he didn't make any advances. <laughs> He's all right, really. It's a bit difficult, that's all. Hates change. Yes. Mm. I wonder what he thinks of this house now. Oh, you know, I could kick myself. I meant to take photographs before work started, you know, before and after shots. Yes, we got so excited we forgot. And we couldn't stay here then, we're still working in town. Oh, I've got plenty of pictures. Have you? Yes. I hope you don't mind. For painting. I'm doing one now. Finishing one off of how this place looks last winter. Oh, how lovely. Ian. Yes, yes, we'd like to take a look at that sometime. Buy it off you, maybe. Well, have a look at the wares first. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice one of the bridge. In the art shop and asking store. Yes. We bought one of them. Yeah. Oh, ah, yeah, it's mm. very nice. The kind of thing you can pass on to your kids. They'll like your house. Mm. Yeah, I suppose so. Yes. A place like this ought to be passed on. Inherited. Like houses used to be. It must have a marvellous history. When are you going to start, Alex? If that doesn't sound rude. What? A family. How funny. That's the second time tonight. We aren't. I'm too interested in my work. Children would only get in the way. And besides, we couldn't afford it. The money that's gone on this place, we need Alex working. <laughs> Still, she does work at home. Is, is there any more sherry, Ian? Oh. No, definitely not for us. That's about the last thing we want. Yes, that really would be a catastrophe. Whatever is that funny smell? Oh, shut up, Mary. Sorry? No, I, I just thought I smelt something. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, it weren't me. Oh, God, Ian, I knew it. What is it? Well, I, I thought it was dry rot initially, but it's not. Oh, some bird trapped in the chimney, you know, or mice or something. Mm. It's not exactly Jurebien, is it? It smells like death. Oh, it gives me the shivers, it really does. Seems to be coming right from that stone there, in that corner. Your cradle corner, Lizzie. Not my cradle corner. Yours. Uh, Dr. Sutcliffe, you haven't said anything. What do you reckon it is? I've smelt that smell before. What is it? You're not going to like this. 
It's very odd, certainly. What is it? I smelt it before, in the crematorium. Oh, that gives you the creeps. It has the smell of decay and death, certainly. Liz is right. But something else, too. It smells distinctly like burning flesh. Oh. Ugh. It's right. Put me off my dinner. It seems to pervade the house sometimes. I hate it. It's sickening. Well, that's where it's coming from, though. No? Oh, there. I've opened the windows. I feel sick. Oh, Joe. I knew it. I knew it. It would happen now of all times. Alex, love. Alex, it's all right. It's going. It's going. Now. It's horrible. I wouldn't care if we knew what it was. Well, maybe there's something in the house's history. S something that might explain. Oh, what do you mean? Well, something physical you could nail the smell down to. What the corner was used for, perhaps. There are some very old books in the library reference section. Well, you said it was used for the cradle. Yes, yes, a corner like that usually was. Do you think it's something supernatural? No, there's no supernatural about that smell. I didn't say it was. Maybe the corner's crying out for its cradle, then. You should get one, keep it happy. <laughs> hey, right, that's the answer. <laughs> anyway, it's gone at last. <laughs> Now, shall we get down to some dinner? Yes, come yes, on, lovely. everybody, let's get started. <laughs> oh, what an appetising aroma. Are you a cordon bleu as well? Mrs Turner? Alex? What? Oh, Dr Sutcliffe, <laughs> sorry, I was miles away. You certainly looked in a dream. I suppose I was, really. I tried to phone you earlier to say what a marvellous dinner that was the other night. Oh, glad you liked it. Quite superb. A most enjoyable social occasion. Yes, I enjoyed myself, too. Took my mind off things. No. Are you worried about something? Worried? No. Why? I'm sorry. You just said you... I'm off to meet Ian from the office. Lunchtime. Ah, that's good. Pub lunch, eh? No, we're going shopping, actually. Alex! Mm -hmm. Oh, there he is. Oh, hello, Ian. Ah, Dr. Sutcliffe. How nice. We're just off shopping. So I hear. Anything special? Well, I saw a cradle in the antique shop yesterday. Well, so I brought Alex along to look at it. Quite a coincidence, really. Yes, we were just talking about it over dinner the other night. Yes, I remember. For your corner by the fire. Lizzie's cradle corner. She denies any claim to it. Yes, funny that. The way she said it. Oh, Lizzie's a bit, well, fay, I suppose. The artist in her, maybe. Anyway, I have a call to make. I must be on the road. I'll see you soon. Not on business, I hope. No. You must both come round for drinks. Give me a ring for the week. Will do. Bye. 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 Ah, oh, nice woman, that. Yes. Oh, what's wrong? Sorry? What's wrong, dreamer? Nothing. Why? How's the office? Seen your secret file yet? Oh, no, no. They're definitely keeping something from me. It's very worrying. Ah, here we are. Oh, where is it? I can't see. Oh, well, it's, uh, it's a bit hidden. Under that old sewing machine. Th there's an umbrella in it. Oh, yes. Mm. Mm, wooden. It looks very old to me. I think it's got a carving on the side. Mm. Oh, let's go in and have a look. See, she loves it. <laughs> oh, Maisie. She'll be wanting us to light the fire for her next. Rock a bye, pussy in the treetop. <laughs> when the wind blows, the cradle will rock. Oh, what a life, eh? <laughs> Can't be bad. What a gem it is. Elizabethan, I say, wouldn't you? Yes. Pity the wood got scorched there. Hmm. This is very blackened and charred, isn't it? I wish I could read the name at the top of the cradle. I'm sure there's a name carved there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ah. Uh, oh. Mm, something. Yes, a bit of that. Hmm. I wonder how it got scorched like that. Uh. <laughs> Maisie's gone to sleep. Oh, don't. You'll wake her. Seems a shame. <laughs> oh, poor old cat. <laughs> anyway, I must be off. I've got a client at 2.30. All right, darling. Well, thanks for bringing me home. Oh, I couldn't lumber you with a great wooden thing like that, could I? Anyway, nice change. Yes, makes a break for me, too. Oh, don't work too hard. Take care. It's getting overcast. Don't get wet. Bye. Bye, darling. rock bye baby. Mm. Why in heaven's name am I singing that? It's all your fault, Maisie, you spoiled puss. Well, back to work. Hmm. I 
mauve colour mixed with a russet. Hmm. Nice. Nice effect, that. It's just like that bracken and heather we saw last Sunday up on Cradle Heights. I'll just weave you in next. God, it's getting dark, isn't it? I can hardly see the loom. That's a bit better. Yes, now. Rock a bye, baby, in the tree top. Rain and blue. No, that green isn't right. I need a bulkier texture anyway to get the right effect. Hmm. Yeah, that's better. Stone, like the dry stone walls. Yes. Yes, that's more like it. Dark grey stone colour. Like the walls on the hills where the bracken grows. Dark and dank like the sodden earth. That funny smell it has to kill him. Oh, it's getting cold. Rain on the way. Oh, shut up, Maisie. I'm trying to concentrate. Walk a bye, baby, on the street home. Maisie, stop it. Stop it. You're rocking the cradle. What's the matter with you? You're rocking the cradle, Maisie. Stop meowing, for heaven's sake. Stop it. Oh, God. That smell. There it is again. Oh, I can't bear it. It's horrible. Decay. Decay and death. That's what it is. Lizzie was right. Stop it. Stop it. Maisie. Maisie, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Maisie? Maisie? Oh, she's gone. The kitchen, I suppose. It is rather cold in here. I should light the fire. It must be a draught to make the cradle rock like that. At least it's got rid of the smell. Oof. Stupid cat making the cradle rock. It must have been her. There isn't any wind. There. Let's brighten the place up. It makes him so dark and close. Funny. Must be because it's so overcast. I say we're in for a storm. Let's pick what they mean by close. There, that's better. It's a pretty cradle. Oak, I should think. It'd take a lot to burn that. I wonder how it got so charred. Funny. Some fool probably put it on the fire before they realised it was worth something, I expect. Cradle's end. Well, it nearly was, wasn't it? You must get on with that sample again. Rock a bye, baby. Maisie? You're back again. Is it because I lit the fire? Maisie? Maisie, where are you? Oh, she's not there. Must be outside. I'll never finish this sample at this rate. Concentrate, concentrate. Who's there? Is there anybody there? Oh, that smell. Like... Like death. Ian. Ian. Mrs. Turner. Alex, darling, wake up. Mm. Ian, help me. Ian. It's all right, darling. I'm here. I'm here. Oh. Rest now, Alex. Take it easy. It's all right. 
Whatever happened? I came home and found you lying on the floor. Out cold. Oh, you're still cold, aren't you? I lit the fire. Yes, a, a log had fallen out. The house was filled with smoke and... And what? No, nothing, darling. The smell from the cradle corner it was, wasn't it? Alex. Wasn't it? Yes, yes, all right. Rest now, Mrs. Turner. Try to sleep. I'll pop back in the morning, see how you are. Let's leave her now. Is she all right? It's not like Alex fainting like that. You see, she's never fainted before. No. Have you noticed anything else unusual about her? Her appetite and so on? Well, now you mention it, she isn't eating a lot just now. Hmm. This thing she has about that smell in the sitting room. Yes, I know. It preys on her mind. Yes. Have you had it investigated? Well, I had a severe round before that dinner party, but he couldn't find anything. Yes. Still, it shouldn't prey on her mind like that, almost obsessive. I'd keep an eye on her if I were you. What's wrong with Alex, Doctor? Well, it may not be something wrong, exactly. Perfectly natural, in fact. Women do go a little strange at times like that. And then there's the fainting. Well, what are you getting at? Well, it's too early to tell, but you'd better brace yourself just in case. She just might be pregnant. <laughs> it's not possible. Well, mistakes do happen. Not with us. It's not possible. It's just not. Well, I may be wrong. I hope to God you are. Oh, no. Now, don't say anything. Wait and see. I may be wrong. She might just be anemic. I'll do some tests. Yes, of course. Mm. That, that'll be it. Yes. I hope to God she's not pregnant. She'd better not be. Well, wait and see. Talk to her. Find out if there's anything troubling her. I tell you, Alex, it's just not possible. But it did. It did. It rocked all by itself. There must have been a draft. There was no wind. It did rain that afternoon. But there was no wind. There must have been. Cradles don't rock by themselves. Exactly. Or maybe Maisie had gone back and got into the cradle again. You said it was dark. You may not have seen her. Ian, I saw the cradle in the full glare of the fire, just as you see it now. Rocking, rocking, rocking. Except it isn't rocking now. It was then. All right, all right. It was rocking then. But it hasn't rocked for me or anybody else. It didn't rock for Lizzie, did it, when she came to see you this morning? No, no, it didn't. Well, that just proves she was right, doesn't it? What on earth do you mean? Isn't her cradle corner? Everybody says it's Lizzie's cradle corner, and it isn't. It's mine. It's mine. Alex, for God's sake, calm down. Oh, what's got into you all of a sudden? I'm sorry. I don't know. I keep getting all worked up. I don't know why. I was just so scared. That's all. It's got me on edge. There's no need to be so possessive about it. We've all smelled that weird smell. Yes, that's true. Well, I'm glad. I think I was going round the bend otherwise. <laughs> it's just wishful thinking. That's all. What do you mean? Uh, nothing. What do you mean, Ian? Wishful thinking? Just, well, all this cradle-rocking business, you've got it on the brain. It's not my fault. No, no, I suppose not. You're a woman, that's all. What are you getting at? Nothing. Ian, tell me what you're getting all at. All right. Oh, I I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to shout. I, I mean, we agreed, didn't we? We had one of those honest discussions, didn't we? The type all trendy modern married couples do have. What about? About whether we wanted a family, Alex, dear, remember? I know we did. So what? Yes, so what? I begin to wonder. So do I. What are you on about? You decided. I mean, we decided, or am I wrong? We decided, didn't we, that we didn't want any kids, right? Right. I mean, tell me. You will tell me, won't you, if you've changed your mind? What do you mean? I haven't changed my mind. I haven't. You haven't? No. You sure? Yes, I don't want any kids. I don't want a baby, not now or ever. All right. I'm glad to go that straight. I don't know what's put it into your head. <laughs> you? All this? All what? All this carry on about cradles rocking, babies crying, all that. What am I supposed to think? I don't know. What do you think? Oh, now, look, love, don't get your patty up what again. What do you think? Well, I think... Correction, thought. I thought that it must be you. Wishful thinking, you know, something inside you, a frustrated maternal instinct trying to get out. Oh, crying out loud. Love, I'm just trying. I know what you're trying to do. I'm just... I told you I don't want any kids. You're sure? Yes, I'm sure. Got it? Okay. Just as long as there aren't any mistakes, that's all. Ian. All right. 
Let's forget it. Yes. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. I think there's a metallic twist through this bootleg effect. Yes. Hmm. 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 Yes. Very frosty looking that. Frost on stone walls. Yes. Lovely. They should gobble this up in Chelsea. Make a right posh evening frock, as Mary would say. She might sell dresses made of my trust in open boutique. There's a thought now. Expand the business. <laughs> if I can concentrate for that damn smell, go away, smell, go away. Now, a little sludgy green. No, that would ruin it. No, stick to the greys and whites. Oh, God, it's getting stronger. Maybe if I sing loud enough and ignore it, it'll go away. rock a baby on the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will... No. No, I don't want you to. I don't want it. I don't. Please stop rocking. Please. God, I must be going bonkers, that's what it is. I'm not imagining it. I'm not, though, no. He's wrong there, if that's what he thinks. I don't want it. I don't want a baby, no. He's wrong. You're wrong, I don't. No. Oh, don't think about it. Mr. Pill, I know I did, didn't I? Did. Yes, I know I did. Stupid cow, what did I do that for? Not on purpose. No, I know it wasn't, but I did. I can't be, though. No, of course not. A cradle. That has got me imagining things, damn it. No, oh, it must be something, something causing it all. Lizzie. Yes, I'll phone Lizzie. Get to the bottom of it. Three seven one three. Lizzie. Yes. Who is it? Alex, down at Cradle's End. Hello, dear. How's things? All right. Yes. Well, I didn't disturb you in the middle of artistic inspiration, did I? No, dear. Just washing up. Oh, yes. Do you want something? Or is it just a friendly chat? Well, a bit of both, really. Ah, oh, well, it's your line, as they say. Yes. Had any nasty smells lately? <laughs> it's funny you should say that. Oh, God, I do feel better talking to you. Get things in proportion. I mean, it's funny, really. What's up? Do you remember you said something once about books, reference books of some sort, with a history of Cradle Beck in? Oh, yes. There's a rather interesting book in the library. I wondered if you could get it for me. Well, I could try. They're not keen on lending it out. I'd be very grateful. What do you want it for? Oh, nothing really. Just thought it'd be nice to check up on the house's history, you know? Ah, yes. See if you can trace the source of the trouble. I dare say there's some perfectly logical explanation. Yes. I expect so. But if you can... Well, I'll do my best. I'll, I'll pop it round to you if I get it. Thanks. No, not at all. Oh, while I'm at it, I'll bring that picture I did of Cradle's End House before you did it up. Let you have a look at it. Oh, how kind. Yeah. See you then. Goodbye. Cheery bye. Cheery bye. Oh, Lord, I have let us in for it. That picture's anything like the one in Bryson's shop window. <laughs> Good old Lizzie. I suppose we'll have to buy it. Still, she can help us get to the source of the trouble. Now concentrate. My frosty evening cloth. Frost, frost, go away. Come again another day. Oh, don't be silly, Alex. Anyway, I can't be. Wait and see all I can do. 
Another month. Oh, God, a whole month to wait before I can be absolutely sure I'm not. I'll never stand the strain. I'll go crazy. White bouquet strand intertwined with a grey yarn. I'll go and see our doctor friend in a month if... Oh, shut up. Concentrate. God, you wouldn't believe it would be so dark by a window. Mm-hmm. Oh, stop it. What makes me sing that? What? Got it on my brain. Now, a metallic twist into the boucle and... Oh, God. Putrid. Horrible. Oh. oh I feel sick. It's the smell. That's why I feel sick. No other reason. Oh, God. Fresh air. No. Please believe me. I don't want. I don't want your baby. Oh, leave me alone. Please, please leave me alone. <laughs> something about not spilling pink gins all over it or anything. Oh, how quaint. Oh, that's better. Oh. Hope you like the picture. One of my best, I think. Oh, is this the bit? Oh, yes, yes. I left a marker in the relevant chapter. Most interesting. Wish I'd read it before I did the picture. Really casts a new light on the place. Oh, uh, drink? Uh, warm yourself? Drinking through the day. Thank you. You're looking a little tired, dear. Sorry? Oh, uh, yes, I suppose I am. A bit overworked, maybe. I got a lot of orders in. It's making me rather nervy, I'm afraid. Short-tempered. Oh, oh, poor Ian. Yes, poor Maisie, too. She's keeping well out of the way just now. Well, I'm sorry to disturb you. I shan't stay long. Sorry? I'll be off shortly, then. Oh, no, stay. Please do. It's nice to have an excuse for a rest and a bit of company. Yes, it's lonely being on your own, I always think. Yes, makes your imagination work overtime. Yes. Seeing pictures in the fire. Lovely. You could paint that. Or make up a nice piece of cloth with all the colours woven into it. Yes, it's a good idea. Look how the flames curl out. Yes. They look as though they're reaching out for something, almost. How nice to have a living fire. Nothing like it. What does it say in the book, Lizzie? Oh, well, you'd best read it for yourself. You're not the first to have had trouble, though, I can tell you that. Oh? I don't know why. I only got back as far as 1750 in my reading. But the house hasn't been lived in since the 19th century. And before that, nobody ever stayed long. There's a lot of talk about couples being unhappy, marriages breaking up. Ah, I'm glad you're here. A happy pair like you should break the spell, if there is one. Yes, we are happy, it's true. It's a nice thought, that, that we might be able to break the spell. Do you know, nobody seems to have successfully reared a family here. A coincidence. Anyway, that won't bother us. We don't want to. At least of all, just now, with all these orders coming in. Yes, yes, of course. Still, you don't want to work too hard. No. Anyway, give my love to Ian. Oh, yes, and thank you for all your trouble. That's all right. Let me know what else you find out. I love places with a history. Goodbye, then. Yes. Bye-bye. Oh, look, you've forgotten something. Oh, no, dear. 
That's the picture. The picture? I thought you and Ian wanted to see oh, it. Oh, yes, of course. How kind. Oh, stupid of me. <laughs> uh, thank you for the scotch. Bye. Bye. Oh, dear. I wonder what it's like. I think I'll leave it clear and get home. Now, let's see. Cradles and house, yeah, 1750. That's where she got up to. Let's go back a bit. Yeah, 1683. 1652. 1652, Thomas Nesbitt of Boland came to the parish to wed one Alice Trencher. And in the year 1652, they laid the foundations of a great house on a desolate place by a stream, there to set up farming a new and vast estate. The house and other buildings were completed in 1655, and Thomas took Alice to live there. The estate grew yearly, and Thomas prospered from his woolen trade and his cattle, but Alice proved barren. Why do you always blame the woman? Alice proved barren, and the marriage was without issue for many years. Thomas then cast Alice off till she proved fruitful, oh, honestly, and took one Robert Nesbitt, a nephew of his, to be his heir. In 1678, he came to live in Cradle's End House and ran the dairy for his uncle. Thomas accused him of murdering the infant in jealousy of his inheritance, and Robert was hanged. Thomas Nesbitt lived on at Cradle's End House for several years, then in 1688 he was committed to the county asylum where he died of a ripe old age. It was said at the time of the infant's death that the child was the result of adultery and not true issue of Thomas. I'll bet. Not true issue of Thomas. But blame was attached to one of the Huguenots who had come into the area at that time. Never. Oh, poor Alice. 1655 to 1678. That's 23 years waiting for a child. When she finds she's pregnant at last, what? Maybe Thomas thought it was his at first. Fancy calling him Robert, though, British actors. Of course, maybe it was the Huguenot who was the father after all. There's nothing to say it was Robert. Except the coincidence. And then later on, after the child was baptised and everything, Thomas found out, or at least suspected, that it was Rob's child. Not his, after all. And killed the baby in a rage. Oh, God. Set fire to its cradle. He must have been out of his mind. Oh, poor Alice. Poor, poor Alice. The house, which became known as Cradle's End House from that time, remained empty for some years while the law was in dispute over the rightful owner of the estate. Then in 1750, it was at last sold to one Joshua Hindle of Ilkley, bachelor. Where's that bit about the baby again? When the infant was but three months old, it suffered death by fire in its cradle. How horrible. Was it Dr. Sutcliffe said? The smell reminded her of something. Death and... Yes. Crematorium. Burning flesh. Oh. No wonder. Wait till Ian reads this. I must show him when he gets in. And that cradle. It's too much. It can't be the same one. It's just not possible. Oh, he's so scorched. Oh, I know something. I bet it's Robert. I don't believe it. It's too weird. It really is. But we should have found the exact cradle that Alice had. Why? Why us? Why? Believe it. No, it all sounds very childish to me. Oh, no. no it's marvellous. Three grown men. <laughs> oh, look, Ian, darling, please, why don't you read that book? Oh. It's just a chapter, very small. Oh, darling, I'm tired. It's been a long day. It explains the smell, the cradle rocking, everything. <laughs> darling, I will not pander to your fantasies. They are not fantasies. Oh, dear. <laughs> File 707. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad I got to the bottom of it. Oh, Ian, please. <laughs> oh, Alex Smith, well, I demanded to see the file. Oh, dear, I demand to be consulted in future. I said very angry. Oh, poor old lad. Had to say yes. Never seen anybody more embarrassed. Why won't you listen? Then I opened up the file and I found 
All the old playboys and pin-up pictures. Oh, it's marvellous. A genuine collection of old porn. Ha! Those crafty old dodgers have been having sly looks at this every day for years. Oh, dear. Oh, don't you think it's funny? Very. <laughs> Your secret is out, I said. Oh, marvellous. Oh, dear, it is funny, though, isn't it? Oh, yes, <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> What's the matter with you? What's wrong? You're like a bear with a sore head these days. Why won't you look at the book? I've told you I'm tired. I do enough reading in the office. Oh, what's wrong with watching the box? Anyway, I will not pander to your fantasies. What the hell is file 707 if that's not fantasy? <laughs> that's different. You're telling me it's different. <laughs> I want to move. What? I want to move house. Leave this place. Oh, my God, no. I can't stand any more of oh, it. Oh, this is just bloody ridiculous. Pull yourself together. Oh, Ian, please. Alex, I'm sorry. I will just not pander. Don't say it again. Please, just don't say it. Hey, we haven't looked at Liz's picture. No. I suppose we'd better. If you like. Yep. Better get it over with, I suppose. I don't know what we'll say to her. Oh. Oh, look at this. <laughs> yeah, have a look. It's genuine Walt Disney, this is. Come on, come have a look. See. What? Can't you just see them? Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs trotting gaily off to work over their wobbly bridge. Snow White did not go off to work with the Seven Dwarfs. What? She didn't. Snow White did not trot off to work with the Seven Dwarfs or anybody else for that it's matter. It's a wobbly bridge. Look, look, will you? Like Walt Disney. Lizzie does not paint wobbly bridges. <laughs> she does. There's one for a start. It is not wobbly. You've lost your sense of humour. That's what's the matter with you. No, I haven't. I just don't want to pander to your fantasies. All right. I'm going out. Ian, Ian, please, don't let's quarrel. Oh. Poor old Lizzie. Poor Alice. He is right, though, I have to admit it. I can just see them. Dopey, grumpy, sneezy. <laughs> it is just a little bit wobbly, I suppose. <laughs> Are you all right? You look right drawn. Oh, I'm fine, really. Mm. Well, you don't want to overdo it. All work and no play. Yes. Well, I'd pop in on Margaret Sutcliffe if I was you. Have a check-up. You might be anemic or something. Oh, she's got me on iron pills already. Has she a good... They're marvellous. Did your power of good. And as for stomachs, he can tell you all about them. Oh, really? So you like the cloth? Yes. Oh, yes. I'd love a long dress out of that frost on stone stuff. Nice giving cloth names, isn't it? Yes, well, they're as artistic as pictures, aren't they? They have names like Cradle's End House and Bridge and all that. Mm, yes, I suppose so. I don't think much of that painting, though. Don't you? Mm, wouldn't give you tuppence for it. I like it. Do you? It makes me smile every time I look at it. Well, each to her own. Ian wants it down or in the loo or something. Difficult, isn't it? Knowing the artist. Yes, I suppose it is. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got a good joke? I like a good joke. No, no, not really, no. It's my act of defiance. What? Having that picture up there above the fireplace. Against Ian? Yes, well, against Ian and... Well, everything, I suppose, really. Anyway, I'll be having this do at our house at Christmas, and I'd love some of this frost-on-stone stuff. Oh, it would drape marvellously on me. It looks stunning, right? Good. You're invited, by the way. Oh, Mary, I wish I could, but honestly, I'm rather busy. I haven't finished all my samples for the factory yet. I just can't take on any more. Oh. I think you ought to go and see Margaret Sutcliffe. I would. Come in. Ah, Alex. Sit down. Good morning. Well, now, how are you feeling? Oh, pretty low, to be honest. Oh, come on, Margaret, put me out of my misery. Well, it's pretty definite. Oh, God, no. Afraid so. What am I to do? Has Ian any idea? I don't think so. You'll have to discuss it with him. Yes. Well, what do you want to do? Get rid of it. Well, have you really thought about it? 
I mean, there are other things you could do, you know. Even adoption. Are you really sure? No. Yes. I just don't know how it happened. Well, the facts are, A, you are pregnant, B, if you do want an abortion, and personally, I think you could be wrong to insist. Well, we'd have to find grounds and get moving. I know. You really must give it very serious thought. Now, listen to advice. There's not much time, you know. Well, find grounds, then, please. I don't want it. You're sure? It seems a very hasty decision to me. I mean, what about he, and what does he say? Oh, he certainly doesn't see himself as a father figure. Have you asked him lately? Now, oh, please, don't rush into it like this. Margaret, please, as a friend, do me a favour. Get things moving. Well, if you're sure, though it goes against the grain... I wouldn't usually give in so quickly. I am sure. At least will you promise me you'll continue to think about it meanwhile? Yes, all right, I will, if you say so. Well, I'll make you an appointment to see Dr Nash and ask install. Thank you. Now, promise me you'll discuss it with Ian. Yes, OK, if I must. Now, go home. Think about what I've said. There are all sorts of answers to your problem. And, well, you won't do anything silly, will you? No, of course not. Thanks. Oh, goodbye, then. Yes, goodbye. Uh, keep in those iron tablets, won't you? Yes, thanks. Oh, dear. Does she know what she's doing? Darling, I must talk to you. Alex, Alex, darling. Ian, I must. Relax, love. Now, you know what I think about it. If you'd read that book... Well, I didn't. And I'm glad. Now, drop it. I've heard about enough about your ghosties. But there's something else. Now, relax. There's something else I have to tell you. I know, I know. Do you? There's no need to say any more. Ian knows all about it. Oh. What shall we do? <sighs> nothing, love. Nothing. Just relax and wait and see. We don't know how things will turn out. Yes, we do. No, we don't. Now, come on, love. I'll give your shoulders a rub. <coughs> Relax now. Mm. <laughs> Is that better? Oh, it's lovely. You've been looking right peaky, as they say <laughs> around these parts. Ah, oh, that's better. I thought you'd lost all your sense of humour. No, I haven't. I'm glad to hear it. I thought what you said about Lizzie's picture was very funny. No, you didn't. You were furious. No, I wasn't. Well, I was a bit. <laughs> I laughed like a drain when you'd gone there. Did you? Yes. <laughs> Makes me giggle whenever I look at it. Well, then I'll be... <laughs> I think it's even laid the ghost hanging there over the fire like that. Yeah, maybe it has. Yes, I haven't heard or smelled anything for a bit. Good. I feel quite peaceful. As though tomorrow didn't matter. That's nice. Give me a kiss. Mm. Nothing matters mm. except you and me. You didn't go. No. Why not? I don't know. I meant to. Something must have stopped me. Well, Dr. Nash was extremely annoyed. I am sorry. Does this mean you've changed your mind? Because if it does, I'm glad. No, no. Well, I don't know. I'll make you another appointment if you'll wear it. Please, please do. It gets more difficult as the months progress. There's so little time now. Is there? Alex. Oh, I'm sorry. Of course there is. I know. I'll talk to Ian again. He does know. He said so, yes. Well, that's something. I'm sorry. I know I'm behaving oddly. I don't know why. Well, it's not altogether unusual in your condition. I want us to move, you see. Move? Yes. Oh, I don't know. I just get the feeling that if we could only move away, away from that house, you know, I'd suddenly stop being pregnant. I don't believe it. Yes, it's crazy. I know it is. Well, why, Alex? Why? I don't know, honestly. I... I, I get such different feelings about the whole thing. I don't understand it. Sometimes I feel sick, sick right inside me, then I don't want it, I hate it, and then at times I feel quite peaceful. And I look at that empty cradle and think, 
Oh, what a pity. Poor Alice, and I quite want it. What? Poor Alex. Don't be silly. It's not so bad. No, Alice. Poor Alice, not Alex. And who in the name of wonder is Alice? Alice Nesbitt. It was her baby got burnt to death in that same cradle by our fire. Now, Alex, dear... You remember what you said about that horrible smell? What? It reminded you of a crematorium. Anyway, I haven't smelled it for ages. Not since I knew I was pregnant. Somehow I feel as though if I got rid of it, and I want to, don't get me wrong, but if I got rid of it, it would all start off again and I couldn't bear it. Alex, listen, Alex, you mustn't give in to all this imagination. That's all it is. It isn't. Oh, it isn't. Oh, why doesn't anybody see? Why don't you see? I feel as though I've been taken over. Don't you see? I've been taken over. Of course I didn't know. How would I know? Nobody told me. She said she'd talk to you. Well, she hasn't. I see. Well, thank God you came out with it at last. How long did you say? Just about four months. <laughs> My God. It was when she didn't turn up at Dr. Nash's for a second appointment. I felt I had to talk to you. Thank God you did. Well, you mustn't be hard on her. Oh, my God. It's quite common for women in her condition to get, well, fancies. The whole thing's a bloody fancy. But she said she'd talk to you. Yeah, maybe she fancied she'd talk to me. I see. She's been on at me about moving house. God, what's that about? Well, you must try and understand her. Well, what can we do? Can we get things moving now? For a termination, you mean? An abortion, yes. Well, to be quite blunt, it's rather late. What? I'd say it was unlikely she could get one now, except on medical grounds, and she's perfectly fit, apart from a slight iron deficiency. So, I've got to lump it. Well, try and understand how she feels. <laughs> she certainly pulled the wool over my eyes. Now, you must try and come to terms, Mr. Turner. It's not really her fault. It's not my fault. Well, then whose is it? It takes two. I didn't want it. Oh, didn't you? I didn't. Oh. Ian, I still don't. It was a mistake. I don't want it. Well, anyway, it's too late now. What? It's too late now, she said. Who? It's too late. What, to have an abortion? Yes, too late. We've got to lump it. But it can't be. I don't want it. Please help me, Ian. Well, why didn't you go to one of those appointments with that other doctor? Tell me that. I don't know. I fell asleep in front of the fire. What? You heard. You fell asleep in front of the fire. Are you really trying to tell me that you don't want this baby? I don't. I don't believe you. You want it all right. And it doesn't matter about me and what I think. That's not true. It damn well is. And now I've got to try and understand you. How the hell do I set about doing that? All quiet on the home front. Hmm? What do you mean, Lizzie? No funny smells or anything in Cradle Corner? No, not for ages, actually. Good. Yes, thank God. At least that's over. At least? Well, maybe it's you. Your condition, Alex, placated the ghost. A baby to fill Cradle Corner at last, eh? Yes. Maybe that's it. Mm. I know who's placated, if that's the right word. And it isn't any ghost. Ian. I'm sorry. Season of goodwill and all that. Oh, I'm going out. Let's all go. Let's go for a walk. It's lovely and crisp and frosty. Mm, it's cold. I like staying by the fire. I'm going out on my own anyway. Well, go then. I'm nice and warm here. You look like a... A contented cow, I know. Well, I'll stay with Alex then, shall I? Do what you like, Lizzie. As long as you don't go putting any more daft ideas into her head. Really? <laughs> oh, take no notice of him, Lizzie. <laughs> he isn't taking it very well, is he? No. <laughs> Oh, Lizzie, honestly, understatement of the year. Well, I don't like to be undiplomatic. <laughs> He'll come round, don't you worry. It feels like some sort of fairy child. Nothing to do with us. But it is yours. Yours and his. Is it? Oh, I suppose so. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I, I feel so confused all the time. Sometimes I feel nothing short of murderous towards it, and then sometimes I feel quite protective, really. Maternal instincts coming to the rescue, I suppose. Yes. At times, I really do love it. Can't say that now. It's like being two people all at once. I love it, and I hate the damn thing as well. 
Am I going batty, do you suppose? Of course not. Don't worry. It'll all resolve itself when the baby's born. Then you'll only love it, I'm sure. Or hate it. I wonder which will it be, Lizzie? I wonder which. He's very ugly, isn't he? Yes, they all are. There's a whole room full of them down there. <laughs> oh, what a thought. <laughs> we've, uh, we've got to give him a name. Are you proud, then? What? Oh, proud father and all that. Oh, I don't know. I feel responsible. I know that. Responsible for that wriggling lump for the next 20 years. Oh, I hope we like him when he grows up. I thought you wanted him adopted. Oh, don't be daft. How could we? No, he's our responsibility. Oh, yes. I suppose. You wanted him. Did I? I thought so. Oh, I don't know. I think we should call him Robert. Why? Why not Ian after me? He's not Scottish. Neither am I. Well, there you are, then. You don't have to be Scottish to be called Ian. Anyway, what about you, Alex, Alexandra? That's not exactly English. Oh, that's different. Anyway, I think he is a Robert. How can you tell? Instinct. What else? Are you breastfeeding him? Oh, no, I don't think so. Those dreadful things for your boobs, Mary told me. She went up two cups. She could do with this. He's crying a lot, poor little thing. Oh, they'll take him away soon. Robert, yes. I suppose that powdered stuff's all right. It's got all the right things in it. Of course it, it has. Oh, God, it'd be nice to be thin again. You said you were going to breastfeed him. You said it was better. Oh, yes, before I did. I had this vision of me being all motherly and milky. Well, what made you change your mind? I don't want the smell of milk. Here, hold him. Go on. If you insist. Uh, don't we look pretty together? Yes, you do, rather. There. He's beautiful, aren't you? Beautiful, eh? Little, little Robert. I think he likes me. Your daddy and me are going to look after you better than any other baby in the whole wide world. There, now. Oh, I suppose it's not so bad. I like you if you like me, eh? How about that, Robert? <laughs> Fair's fair. We'll make a pact. I like you if you like me. He doesn't like me. Alex. He will if you like him, like you said. Well, I don't. Put him back in his car. Alex, darling. He doesn't like me, so I won't like him. You childish. I want to go to sleep now. Get him to take him away. Yes, oh, Yes, you... you... Sleep, love. You must be very tired, that's what it is. Go to sleep. We'll soon have you home and everything will be all right. He doesn't like it there. It's the obvious place for him. I'm being logical like you want. Cradle Corner is the right place to put a baby. He howls when you put him there. Exercises his lungs. He's driving me crackers. You don't want to pander to my fancies, do you, about the ghosties? That's the place where you put babies. All right. All right. Maybe he needs feeding. Well, feed him, then. How can I? The bottle's in the kitchen. Go on. It's not as though I was breastfeeding him. Why don't you want to? I don't want to touch him. Why, love? Must you be so vicious about it all? You want it. I didn't. And I don't. I thought once he was born, he'd be separate from me, not part of me anymore. I didn't like that when he was inside me. I wasn't me, because I was always him as well. I want to be me. Oh, poor Robert. Poor Robert. I do love you, really, I do. Poor, poor Robert. Come here. There, there. That's all he needs. A bit of loving. You give it to him, then. What? Give him his loving. Alex, I don't understand. He isn't mine. He isn't mine. I just don't understand. Put him back in his cradle. Alex, he doesn't like it there. Maybe it's too smoky so close to the fire. It's warm for him. He should like that. All right. All right. Look. Why don't you call in on Margaret Sutcliffe? Maybe it's your hormones or something. Hormones? Well, it must be some... Oh, God. What's that? Oh, I knew it. I knew it. It's back. It's back. Oh, no. I thought we'd finished with that. Open the window. I'll go open the front door. 
Ian, come back, look. What is it? Oh, you've set it rocking. I never touched it. You must have. No. See, it's still rocking. Look. You started it, then? No, I didn't. You must have touched it with your foot. I'm miles away from it. Well, it must be a current of air somewhere down the chimney. No, it isn't. It's Alice. She's got her baby at last. She's got what she wanted. What? Poor Alice. We should give him to her, shouldn't we? Yes, it's Robert, Alice, your baby. Rock him gently, that's right. Rock him to sleep. For God's sake, Alex, stop it, will you? Just stop it. You've taken him out of his cradle, Thomas. You shouldn't do that. Alice wants him. It's cruel. You are cruel to Robert. Stop it. Stop it, Alex. Wake up, Alex. We should give him to her, shouldn't we? We should give him to her. It is a fairly common thing, this rejection of the baby by its mother. You see, well, as you say, it is her hormones. The changeover can be quite traumatic for the system and it can result in a postnatal depression of quite alarming proportions. The medical profession takes it all really very seriously now, you know. The condition has even got itself a new name, Baby Blues. I expect that's what it is with Alex. I wish I could think it was as simple as that. Why? What else is there? Well, all this business about Cradle Corner, she must have told you. Well, a little, yes. There was a book. I read it. She doesn't know that. I pretended not to know the story behind it all. Just ignore it. I thought... You see, I wanted to keep things as normal as possible for her. I thought that if I kept my feet on the ground, then she would as well. Well, at least you did try to understand. You see, Alex thinks it's this woman... Alice Nesbitt that's doing it. The smell, the cradle rocking and everything. Yes, Lizzie told me the story. Horrible. And that was preying on Alex's mind all the time she was pregnant. Yeah. Yes. She seems to think that the child is somehow Alice's and not hers. You know, she's even called him Robert, the same name. Mm. And that cradle. It could actually be the original cradle. Oh, I can't swallow that. It's not possible. Yeah, I know it's hard, isn't it? But it looks like it. The scorch marks, the name carved on it, R-O something. It has to be Robert. Maybe. Now, the truth is she hasn't been herself from the start. Since the cradle started rocking, she's been so unpredictable. Her moods, oh, not like her at all. The thing she says sometimes, almost vicious. And then suddenly she's all overpowering love. Mm. Oh, I don't know where I am, and that's the truth. Ian, let's get one thing straight. <laughs> yes, for God's sake, let's do that, please. How do you feel about the child? I feel sorry for him. It's not his fault, is it? Oh, I don't know, I rather like him, really. You know, a sort of sneaking affection. Oh, yes. I mean, I'm quite willing to accept him now. I wasn't before he was born, I admit it, but now... Well, he's here, and he's mine, and... I'd love him. I would, but I can't stand things as they are. I mean, if Alex would accept him, well, all right, but she won't. And I can't live as we are, I can't. Nobody could. And it's not fair on him either. So if things go on as they are, then we'd do better to put him where he was wanted. Have him adopted? Yes. I see. So it's all down to Alex. Where is she now? At home. With the baby? Yes, of course. Nobody else there at all? No. Should there be? I don't know. But if she's as unpredictable and as obsessed with his idea as you say, I feel uneasy somehow. I'd like to see her again. I'll get back. Yes, I think I'd better come too. Come on, quick, get your coat on. When the bow breaks, the cradle will fall. Down will come baby cradle and all. There now. There, Robert. You rock him now, Alice. Go on, your turn. You rock him gently to sleep. That's right. I've got work to do over here. Lovely fire design for the woolen mills. Flames, yellow, red, purple, lovely colours. Warm, lovely flames. 
Robert likes to be warm, doesn't he? Of course he does. That's why he likes his cradle there near the fire. I'm glad you're here, Alice. I really am. I can get on with my work while you rock Robert. He'd be a very good old bear, you know that. Of course, you're not foreign. You belong here, in this very house, like Robert. It's me that's foreign. Off Cumnan I am. Yes. I'm glad you're here. Your company. And I don't mind you bringing Robert either. He's company too. And you rock him so nicely. Bright yellow flames. Yes, I shall weave you a blanket of flames, Robert. See, I'm weaving it for you. Red, warm red. It'll keep you warm, Robert. Are you cold? Is he cold, Alice? Poor Robert. I must work hard. I must finish his blanket, Robert's blanket. Robert. Yes. I must work hard. Red, warm flames. Robert. That's right. For Robert, Alice. Robert. Robert. You're rocking him too hard now, Alice. Give him to me. Yes, Alice. I give him to you. He's your baby at last. Give him to me. Give him to me. Yes, Alice, he's yours. But you're rocking him too hard. You don't want to wake him, do you? That's better. Robert's asleep. You've done well, Alice. You're a good mother. That's why I gave him to you. Give him to me. Give him to me. Give him to me. But he's yours already. See, he loves you. Cold. I haven't finished his blanket yet. I have more work to do yet. He can't have it. Cold, cold. It isn't finished, his blanket all aflame. Give him to me. What can I do to make him warm? Cold. Is he cold? Give him to me. All right. If you want, I'll give him to you, Alice. Cold. All wrapped up in his blanket of flame. Give him to me. He'll be warm then, your Robert. I'll give him to you, Alice. See, a little flame, yellow and bright, just like his blanket. Ah. That's better, isn't it? He'll be closer to you now. Yes. All warm with his Alice. I'm glad his cradle's made of wood. It'll burn so nicely and keep him warm for you. I'll put a log right beside it. A bright, flaming log. There. Ah. I'll give him to you, Alice. Yes. Yes. All wrapped up in his blanket of flame. Alex! Oh, Alex! For God's sake, Alex! Alex! The baby! The baby! What's the matter? Oh. What's happening? Robert! What's the matter with Robert? Oh, God! God, he's dead! Robert! I give him to me! Robert! Robert, my baby! What has she done? Oh, God, he's gone blue! Do something, please, Margaret! Now get in the car, Alex! You too! You drive here! Where are you taking him? To the hospital where he belongs! He belongs to me! He's mine! He's my baby! I know! I know, darling. You shan't have him, Alice. You shan't have him. I won't give him to you. I won't. I won't. He's mine. How is he? They've put him in an oxygen tent. Will he pull through all right? I don't know. He looks a little better. At least his colour has improved. There was one point when I thought he had no chance at all. Well, what was it exactly? Was it the smoke or what? Well, that didn't help, certainly. But what really caused the trouble in his breathing was most likely a paroxysm brought on by convulsive crying. Oh. When he stopped crying, Alex might have thought he was asleep. Not if she'd looked at him. Well, she may have been working at a loom or in the kitchen at the time. But the smoke, the flames. I know. 
Alex is still in a state of shock. She's under sedation. I'm still shaking. Oh, poor Ian. Poor Alex. What she must have gone through. I know. And now they start asking her questions. They know all about this business, I suppose. Setting fire to the cart and everything. No. But I'll have to tell them, really, and at least something about it. Oh, poor Alex. A question. She, she's not in a fit state, either physically or mentally. Well, I'll tell them that. Oh, why did she do it? Why? Mm. Oh, God, it's all beyond me, honestly, it is. What was it? Pure hate? Possession by Alice? It's hard to believe. Well, who knows? Maybe we'll learn more from Alex herself later. But I shall tell them that while in a state of severe postnatal depression, she attempted to do away with her child. An extreme case, but one which the courts may accept. May. And is it over? Is she all right now, or what? Oh, wait till she comes out of sedation. We'll know better then. Yes, I suppose so. There is a ray of hope, though. When you snatch the baby away from the cradle, it seemed to trigger off something in her. Maybe the shock has broken the spell, if you like. Well, she certainly seemed pretty adamant that nobody was going to take her baby away from her then. Yes. But what if... Yes, if Robert dies. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it, I think, Ian. Come on, let's grab a cup of coffee. I'll tell the nurse where we've gone. Hello, Alex. Oh, Ian, hello. Oh, hello, darling. How are you? Oh. Oh, now, look, you're not to get upset, please, or, or I'll have to go away. Robert. He's in danger, darling. But he's got a chance What now. did I do? What did I do? Alex, calm down. It's all over. What's all over? What did I do, Ian? I did something to him. I know I He'd did. He cried himself into convulsions. But I did something. Oh, all I can remember is flames, bright flames. Why can I remember that, Ian? Later, love, it'll kill What did I do? I want to see him. I want to see my son. Oh, oh Robert. Hush, sweetheart. Oh, oh, send me away now. Hush, hush. You do love him, don't you? Darling. Because I do. I do, Ian, really. I don't want to lose him. Oh, God, don't let him die, please. He won't. He won't, I'm sure now. Because you want him, and I want him. Do you? Yes, very much. I didn't know how much. Well, at least it's done that for us. It's shown us what we had to lose and how much we love him. And we do. We do. Yes, we do. I want him home where I can comfort him, rock him in his cradle. We'll get him a new plastic carry cot like everybody else's. I remember. And little coloured balls stuck across the front where he can see them. They say that's good for them. I read that in Ian, a book. Ian, I remember. Yes, I know her. I didn't see that. Ian, was that me? Oh, I don't know, darling. It didn't seem like it a lot of the time. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what's happened to me. I do. I think. I did read that book, you know. What? About the house and Alice and everything? And everything, yes. You lying swine. Why didn't you tell me? You mean you were pretending all the time? Yes, I'm sorry. I thought it might help. It didn't, that's all. Oh, poor, poor Ian. I hated you for not sharing it all with me, not believing. I did, love, really, only I didn't know what to do. I know. I'm better now. I'm sure of it. Good. Shall we go old Trad and get him a blue carry cop because he's a boy? <laughs> if he... I'm sorry. Oh, Ian. He must live. He must. He will, won't he? Let's hope so, love. Let's hope so. Well, the carry cot doesn't have quite the same feel about it as the old cradle. But he seems to like it anyway. Yes, he's fast asleep. Oh, isn't he sweet? <laughs> he's marvellous, really. Hardly ever cries. The social worker's amazed. She's got nothing to do now except check the fire guard every time she calls. Yes. Oh. She wanted us to have a gas fire put in at first. No. But we found an extra special guard. Yes, look. It locks at the sides, against the wall. Oh, yes. Fancy. That's a good deal. Mm -hmm. Spoils the look of the fireplace, though. Oh, well. I mean, who's going to look at that? With your lovely painting hanging right above it. Oh. Ooh, yes. Isn't it grand? I do think you're clever, Lizzie, painting that. Yeah, mind you, uh, I've always thought that that bridge looked a bit... Unsafe, Lizzie. Is it like that, really? Like what? Well, uh, 
Wobbly. I'd think twice before crossing that. <laughs> it's not a bit wobbly. Lizzie doesn't paint wobbly bridges, do you? Well, I'll have to take another look at it. The original, I mean. Yes, you could paint us one from the other side. Would you like one? The trouble is, we're a bit crowded out as it is. All that antique junk and all. Oh, you could put it in your... Have they had any more trouble? Trouble? Mm. What do you mean? Yes. Have you? From the Pong, you know. Oh, that. No, we haven't, actually. I've, uh, I've got a theory about that. What? You never told me. Well, I think that Alice only bothered us when she thought there was an unwanted child in the house. What do you mean? Her child wasn't wanted. Not by old Thomas, anyway. And maybe she just couldn't bear it to happen again. When she'd wanted a son so much, she couldn't bear to see another baby unloved. She wanted to take him away from us. But now? Well, maybe she sees that she's not needed anymore. Robert is very much loved and wanted. Yes, perhaps that's all she wanted, too. And now? She can rest in peace. And leave us in peace, come to that. Because Cradle's End House has its heir at last. In Rightful Possession by Valerie Georgeson, Alex was played by Elizabeth Bell and Ian by Alan Rothwell. Gus was Harry Markham, the estate agent, Peter Wheeler, Lizzie and Alice, Rosalind Knight, Mary, Meg Johnson, Joe, Alan Meadows, and Dr. Sutcliffe, Sandra Vaux. The play was directed in Manchester by Alfred Bradley.